So far, we have used this diode to freewheel the energy from that inductor during the off time of this MOSFET. And that diode switch on and off by itself. We can't control it. It depends on the direction of the current and voltage at that node to switch on and off. But now we want to make more enhancement and improvement on that side to make more enhancement on the a total efficiency of this converter. To do that, some scientists propose that we can replace that diode with a MOSFET. And once we switch on that MOSFET, if we want to switch on during the on time of that diode, okay, we can provide lower losses path for the current than the diode, okay? So the diode power loss is the voltage drop of that diode, which is 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, according to that type of the diode, times the average uh, value of the current. But if we replace that with a MOSFET, for example, that has very low resistance, uh, I think that will bring less losses because that resistance will not dissipate that much of power compared with the diode. So this is the proposal. And now we can try it. So remember, all these figures now for the diodes, Okay, but now we are going to replace it with a MOSFET. Now, this topology is called asynchronous buck converter. Asynchronous means this MOSFET, we are controlling just one MOSFET, and that is controlled by itself, okay, or by the current and voltage of from that part, okay? I can't control it. So it's asynchronous from the PWM signal I'm providing for the MOSFET, but now, if we change this and replace it by a MOSFET and we provide another copy of this PWM inverted copy, I think we can name it as synchronous buck converter. So we have two versions of buck converter. This is asynchronous. And after replacing that, we can uh, propose the synchronous one. So now let's, I will remove this one. Okay. And get another MOSFET by cubby okay and rotate it and make sure that the source is is connected to the ground and i think because now the source is connected to the ground this is a low side mosfet okay now we want to provide inverted version of this pwm okay and we have different ways to do that one way is to copy this one and the change the initial values here from 0 to 5 make it from 5 to 0 okay or you can take that signal and supply it for to inverter circuit and that inverter circuit will provide here an inverted signal for this MOSFET and to make sure that I'm doing it right without headache of inversion so I will provide a different PWM signal by just copying this one okay and we'll make it on a different side we'll copy these or move these commands a little bit on the right and take these down there okay so now we can change that to G2 okay and S2 is the same as the ground but I will change it to S2 okay the pulse should be from uh, 5 to 0 not 0 to 5 this provides different um, but but remember that it doesn't have any dead time here okay but we will forget the dead time now so now let's label this as G2 and provide G2 here and connect it so we have G2 at this point and also with this point we can provide S2 even if it's the same as the ground, but it's good just to understand it as S2, okay? So now I think we finished now. So, so we should simulate it and and see the efficiency figure again. So let's now start simulation. And I think it finished the simulation. Now let's go to view, spice error log, and look at the efficiency okay so i will it's six ninety six point nine now so now let's copy this one and go to our record here 
right click and control enter enter and we can say synchronous topology synchronous buck okay the efficiency will equal this term and for the first three we can say it's the asynchronous buck okay this i think very good way of just comparing now look at that i think we have the asynchronous the maximum of the uh, all 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 diodes here i think they gave us about six uh, 96.4 but with the mosfet i think we got 96.9 i think 0.5 more okay which means yeah it's it's better option here okay so this is how we improve the efficiency of our buck converter using the synchronous topology yes you pay more for another driver for example uh, but in some applications i think that figure will be higher according to the mosfet you are choosing and we didn't we didn't know if we have some current going through the internal uh, uh, internal data there and we assume that a, all the current will go through that uh, rds on so that's why we have that figure but in some other applications that 0.5 means a lot and i just wanted to brief you about what enhancement they have done to make more uh, efficiency i think we can try something more which is we can try to prevent the that mosfet to use the parallel diode there okay and how we do that by providing another diode okay so let's say i will choose shutke diode okay so i will i will i will try this one we'll see how it goes so i have a shutke diode here that shutke diode has very low voltage drop and i will choose it maybe randomly from shutke diode okay so let's go to shutke and choose anyone okay uh, 100 volt and 100 volt so this one i think this is the previous one that we have chosen okay so i will choose that one just to make sure that i just want to enhance the efficiency and see if the uh, now the parallel diode i think will be bypassed by this external diode okay because that voltage drop is lower than the voltage drop of the internal diode if it exists there and that makes it off because if we have two diodes and one switch on with the smaller voltage drop than the other voltage drop needed for switching on the other diode i think this will switch it off okay but we, let's see if that will enhance the efficiency or make it worse and then we can think about different ways so it's just okay now let's run it and see now uh, the simulation i think it finished now now go to to a uh, view and log yes 97 okay so yeah i didn't copy it so let's copy it again okay 97 this one is synchronous okay with uh, parallel with parallel diode to mosfet okay and the efficiency will equal yeah about 97 which is better than all of the previous experiments yes it's it's relatively very small enhancement but i am showing to you how we think okay and that simulation i think is is good so far to provide you how the in, the efficiency is enhanced by providing different solutions but maybe you are in a way to decide which one is better for you according to how much percentage it provides enhancement and also because that one now you will use more components so you might say yeah it would cost me more so i will not go for that just for 
half half person it, it the decision is for you but i'm showing to you how they provide different solutions for that enhancement maybe we can enhance it more by looking at that mosfet and that mosfet and how they switch and i think we should provide dead time between them to um, decrease the shoot throw uh, chances and losses because shoot throw means that switch and that switch will turn on uh, will be on in on a state at some time and that will make the current go from vn going through that transistor and that transistor to the ground may make a short okay so that's why we have to provide the time to make enhancements and that's another chance for you to investigate and look at and see how both can work with the small dead time i will leave to you how you can provide these properties and also see if the efficiency will increase or no i'm i'm just curious about uh if there is a shoot throw happening here by going to the current measurement okay uh, for this MOSFET and that MOSFET and see if the current spikes at the switching or no okay so now let's run it but let's now wait until it finishes the simulation I think it finished now okay yeah so now let's measure the current value there which is from that terminal and the current value there from that terminal okay so we have two current values look at the city state okay and I think you will agree with me that that's yes there is a, a spike there okay it's happening at switching on and off and that spike in current that means yes they lost some power there because they overlapped during switching on and off okay and that's that makes a lot of losses and i think if you solve this losses by providing the time between them i think this will enhance more the efficiency i will leave it to you to investigate how you can provide this maybe you can look at um, different options maybe circuits additional circuits to provide the dead time between these two PWM and enhance the efficiency. So the purpose of this video or this task is to give you how we think about enhancing the efficiency and you might think also in your coursework about different ways of enhancing the efficiency. You can test the efficiency against different load uh, types or load values, maybe resistive load or inductive load and see how is the efficiency going and also you can provide different uh, figures for the efficiency against the duty cycle okay and see how the efficiency behaves is it, is it fixed or it's totally fixed over the full range of duty cycle or it changes according to the duty cycle because all that study will give you what is the limitation for your back converter and also for your design if you if your design is working very well in high and heavily maybe a loaded system so you might think about ways how to provide solution to enhance it in the light load situation okay and that has different solutions as well if you go through the literature you will find different ways about how they provide efficiency enhancement just in case if the load is very low okay uh, if the current output is very low so I will leave it for you now and and give it as open-ended simulation if you want and see if you have a chance to improve that in your coursework thank you very much and see you in any coming videos